Whitman, middle of wheat fields in rural Washington. You would not think of that as a place to go to learn about Africa. But for me, it really was. I'm thankful to each and every one of you for walking with me and walking with incredible women that were supporting in Kenya. Those seeds for Akilidada were planted at Whitman. They let me fly, you know, to think critically about gender and international development. Critically, not as in criticize, but doing. I use those skills every day now. I was at Whitman on a full scholarship. Go forth and learn. That's tremendous freedom. It's about making sustained investments in people. That's how you change the world. That's how Whitman changed my life. And that's what I'm trying to pay forward. It's the same feeling, getting to say, welcome to the family. We're a classic Whitman story. We were both RAs together uh, at the same time at Anderson Hall. She was another biology major. I think when people think of scientists, they think of people wearing white lab coats and working at benches, but actually a great deal of what scientists do is reading papers and reading books and then writing papers and writing books. One of the great things about the biology major at Whitman was that they required a lot of writing. I took all the writing classes that I could. I was very lucky to write a book in graduate school in the neuroscience program at Stanford. In the neuroscience research I'm doing right now, I'm using a very cool new technique called optogenetics. I study the neural basis of why you get hungry or why you get sleepy, why you get thirsty. The biology of the mind is different than the biology of the pancreas or the biology of the heart in the sense that the mind is really who you are. Whitman really made you ask powerful questions and learn to develop strategies to answer those questions. And I think that as I pursue these neuroscience questions, it's the same philosophy that I learned at Whitman. But in order to feel worthwhile, I had to do something worthwhile. Whitman taught me that if the opportunity doesn't exist, you create the opportunity and you make it work for you. In what I'm doing right now, I carry that same attitude with me. And the first place I really got that was at Whitman. Bringing up the rocks on a chain gang. There's a certain social freedom and kind of camaraderie about studying. That's a good point. The fact that Penrose Library is open 24 hours a day is like the most beautiful thing in the world. I always felt like it was me doing what I was told, coming to Whitman that wasn't how it worked. We're not gonna tell you what to think. We're not gonna tell you what are the right questions to ask. There's mutual respect between professors and students, just feeling like your ideas are being given legitimacy. Many of the most important people in my life I met at Whitman. I worked for a company called Western Wireless, which was started by another Whitman alum. It was a time when most Americans didn't have a cell phone, but you could see what was starting to happen. Western was built on the idea that rural markets, for example, Montana and the Dakotas, were valuable. We recognized that the growth that was happening in more developed markets would eventually make it to the less developed markets that those larger players would want to own one day. I think a lot of environments that I've worked in, it's really been a matter of being able to take in a lot of information and figure out what's important, what's not. And really, I think that's what a liberal arts education teaches you to do. Today, I'm an investor, actively investing in startup companies that are fueling the next wave of innovation. Every day I'm talking to entrepreneurs with new ideas, helping those who are on the front lines point their creativity and their smarts in a direction where they're going to be successful. 10 years ago, I could have never pictured where we are today. And I know that 10 years from now, we're gonna be much more connected in ways that will have a lot of social value, 
exactly what form that takes. That's what I wake up every morning trying to figure out. Do I believe in this kind of education? Then I see it changing people's lives. The Asian Studies program just exploded and we're really much more connected to Asia. I am trying to encourage my students to imagine new futures, creative new approaches to the world. I see them going out and becoming teachers, going out and doing fantastic kinds of social service, and government, and writing, and art, and music. There are habits of mind that you develop at Whitman that will sustain you for your life. I want my students to be good, strong, rigorous thinkers. That's the central goal. But it is important to me what they do with that. Marketing, OSM Radio. In the early 90s, war was erupting here. A war that cost about 100,000 lives. It's very unusual to be a foreigner coming into this environment years after the conflict because you know, one doesn't really know where the front lines were, what the history was. We all came to Whitman with our own basket of possibilities. But I found in my case that Whitman was a, a tremendous, powerful influence in shaping who I would become. Yes, we needed to learn the facts as well, but the important question was, now what do you do with them? How do you think? How do you apply that knowledge? That was the skill that Whitman really expected of us. I did my study abroad in the Balkans, so Croatia, Bosnia, and Serbia, looking at the war and what it did. It's like someone described Bosnia as a functioning car on square tires. I actually have my first thesis draft to do this afternoon. I am hopefully solving the issue of refugee return in Bosnia. <laughs> I'm thinking of alternative electoral structures. The subtext, the, the light motif that kept coming through in my years at Whitman is, don't be afraid of anything. You sure, you can tackle this. I mean, it doesn't mean you're going to tie it up in a bow and have a, a complete solution, but use your intelligence, use your instincts, use your understanding of humanity, roll up your sleeves and jump in. And uh, this, I think, is the overarching value from Whitman that I keep seeing recurring again and again in my life. It's a certain level of challenge that's necessary for you to achieve something. I want to study pre-med and eventually be a doctor, but I'm challenging myself and trying to learn something new. Reading Mouse now, I like the way Spiegelman talks about their relationship and how his father changed after the Holocaust. I can't wait to finish it. campus itself is so alive with activities and things that are going on all the time. For the students, it will always be a place where they are well taken care of in every sense of the word. They're there for you. It's kept that continuity, that wonderful vibrancy and intellectual stimulation, which is just another reason to love Whitman. Yeah, if, if you fade out on that note, probably your best not to try to get the...